Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sally here and Marty. Once again, today we're checking out a small town called Old Shawnee Town here in Southern Illinois. And for those of you who didn't know, Old Shawnee Town is located right on the banks of the Ohio River. And the reason it's called Old Shawnee Town is because back in 1937, a horrible flood wiped out basically the entire town, devastated it. And so the townsfolk who were left behind decided to rebuild. Well, they rebuilt three miles west of here and named the new town Shawnee Town. What was left here was deemed Old Shawnee Town. Once considered the most important city in Illinois, Old Shawnee Town, as it's now known, was a major commercial center in the Northwest Territory and played an important role in establishing the banking industry for the territory of Illinois. Off in the distance, you can see Marty and Mocha checking out the bank. Probably one of the most iconic and memorable old Shawnee Town buildings. This bank was known as the First State Bank of Illinois. Built in 1839 to 1840, this bank cost $86,000 to build. And the inflation calculator equates to a lot of money. And looking at its restored version, we can see why. Standing at an impressive three stories that dwarfs even the tallest of men, this historic building is made out of brick and has an ornate limestone facade and portico gracing its front steps, reminiscent of ancient Greek buildings. I mean, look at some of the ironwork in this here. All of that, that takes a lot. That's a lot of detail. How about in that lamppost up there? Look at the bottom of it. Yeah. And if we're seeing that kind of detail outside, can you imagine what it must have been like on the inside? Not to mention this important detail. They had iron shutters that went over the windows. I wonder if this design feature was protection against thieves or protection against flooding from the river. I'm thinking that, you know, right off the front, that big front room, that might be where they had the vault because that's the only place they have these big iron shutters. I mean, you can see brackets for other shutters, but not the big brackets like these iron shutters have. What other ones were probably just old wood shutters. Somebody must want in. Maybe she thinks there's treats in there. Treats. Look at her, she wants in. I'm sorry, Beagle, but I think you'll be waiting a long time to be let in there. The other thing I want to point out is that even though it was called the First State Bank of Illinois, is that technically this wasn't the First State Bank. That can be found here. Known as the Marshall House, this was the original site of the home of John Marshall, one of the founders and president of the Bank of Illinois, the first bank chartered by the Illinois Territorial Legislature. Or at least its second version, when the bank was first chartered in 1816, started out in a log cabin. Later, in 1822, they built this building. I decided to take a walk up the steps just so all you sightseers can see just how close we are to the Ohio River. And from up here, it kind of looks that the river is down somewhat because if you look off in the distance, you can see what looks like an old channel marker sitting there in the mud. 
But as we know from history, the river has a tendency to flood. At least it did in the past, which is why they built a new Shawnee town. Over here, we can see a marker commemorating those who had to live in tents following that devastating flood in 1937. According to what this says, one and a half miles east of Junction, a 15 acre strip of the Finney Austin farm was used to house the refugees from the flood in tents. Floods along this river were once so common that to protect the town, levees were built and regularly raised up. This went on for 120 years. Then the great flood of 1937 hit. The Ohio River surged over Shawneetown's 60-foot levees, flooding the town in 15 feet of water. When the floodwaters receded, only 20 of the town's 400 homes remained livable. As a result, the federal government with the state of Illinois approved a plan to relocate the entire community. This was the first time the federal government approved the removal of an entire town. I imagine that was pretty devastating for the people that lived here to have their homes and belongings washed away by the flood, to have to live temporarily in tents. I'm surprised that there are even people that still live here. According to what I had found online, there's about 200 or so people that still call Old Shawnee Town home. Over here, we can see a sign commemorating that Lewis and Clark came through here back in 1803, just like we learned in Cave and Rock. But what I didn't know until I started digging into Southern Illinois history is the reason that Lewis and Clark came to this part of Illinois. And surprisingly, that reason was salt. Unlike today, salt was once a precious commodity akin to gold used to preserve and keep food, those who were able to capitalize on converting salt deposits into something usable made themselves rich. Not far from here lies the Great Salt Springs, a place where salt-rich water naturally bubbles out of the earth and into the nearby Saline River. Much of Shawneetown's early success was dependent on the salt from this spring. That ended, though, when a major salt deposit in West Virginia was discovered and salt from there was sold at a cheaper rate. Now here's something I know that must have caught Marty's eye when we first drove into town. This old gas station painted up in the old Texaco colors. I wonder if this sign's original to it or if they just put this out front for looks. Yes, I'm curious about that too. Because when I was looking up history on old Shawnee Town, most of the stuff that I came up with was from like the 1700s, 1800s, early 1900s, nothing more immediate or modern. So it would be interesting to find out if this gas station was indeed an original Texaco or something else. Something we've been noticing here along the way across the street from the first Illinois State Bank are these rings. These look like old like rings that they attach horses to or something, hitch something up to them. You can see they're all hand hammered and they're not true or round. There's a lot of imperfections in them. I don't know what this is on it, but. So they're really old is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, they're old. I mean, they're hand hammered. Somebody didn't do that yesterday. Not something you normally see either. No, not really, but considering the height, if they're at. I mean, they're most likely were hooking something to them. Question is, what were they hooking up? If you know, leave it in the comment section below. Oh, look, it's a baby fire hydrant. He's just a little guy. He hasn't grown up yet. This building here appears to be an original to the town. Looks like they added on and then painted a mural that says Hog Daddy Saloon. Now, I don't know about you, but anything that's called Hog Daddy Saloon immediately catches my attention. And I just wonder what kind of tales these walls could tell. And I have to say, there is a part of me that wishes that I could have gotten here when this place was still going. 
Now here's a place whose walls probably have some good stories to tell. The Rawlings Hotel. Now, according to the sign, General Lafayette was welcomed at the Rawlings Hotel, where a repast had been prepared in his honor. Now, I don't know anything about this General Lafayette, but from the sounds of it, he must have been an important dignitary that he walked between two lines, long lines, excuse me, two long lines of people from the river to the hotel. So based on that, along with the fact that in general, when there's parties, there's generally some shenanigans that go along with it, I think this hotel probably has some dirt or tea to spill. Now, just like we saw in Menominee, Michigan, where there are like four banks in its historic district, Old Shawneetown once had its share of banks too. This here is what's left of the City National Bank. Now, I don't know too much about the history of this particular bank, but what struck me is this, this old scarab beetle on the front. Actually, that beetle, that's just decoration on the old alarm that's hooked to the safe. So if anybody breaks in and tampers with the safe, there's a bell in there and it starts ringing. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I just thought it was a decoration. No, nope, there's a bell in there. Somebody t touches the safe or messes with the safe, that'll start ringing. You really didn't know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, I guess I'm always learning something new with you around. Mr. All kinds of useless information. <laughs> yeah, well, some of it's useful. At least it is when we're out walking around these old small towns. Now here's another place that caught our eye. Not really sure what the building used to be, but I can tell you that it is now Layton's Old Town Bar and Grill. If I had to guess, it's probably a biker bar, don't you think? I assume they're using this fifth wheel trailer as a stage. Yeah, maybe for some bands or something local. Or a local holiday or something. Or something. Party time? Dance on the stage? Yeah, you bet. What are you checking out now, Marty? I'm always amazed at these iron corners that are on buildings sometimes. And it's like a half inch thick. And if we look at the top, we can see some very ornate detailing on it. There you go, sightseers. If Marty were here, we would have missed out on that. Now here's something I wasn't expecting to find. It's a marker for the Sigma Delta Chi Historic Site. And apparently this is the location where Henry Eddy and Alan Kimmel published the first issue of the Illinois Emigrant, which was the second newspaper in Illinois back in 1818. And then just beyond that is this pink building that looks pretty interesting. Let's go check it out. That looks like it's just a storage facility now. But to me, it looks like it's a little bit more modern construction because it's got the cinder block. I don't know, can't really tell you. But I do know that it must be spider season out here because I keep finding like these little spider webs and now I got one attached to me. I think I'm covered in spider webs, Mark. You got a big long one hanging from behind you that looks like a hair. I don't know how far you can see it, but... Look! Yeah, they're everywhere. They're all over the truck. It must be spider hatching day. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. I've never seen that before. Here's something interesting we discovered. An old hand pump sitting on the side of the road. Hooked up. Probably works. What? You're not going to try it? <laughs> There's no handle. And I'm not He-Man. Sometimes you act like you are. Sometimes, when I'm really drunk. No, he doesn't. Get drunk, that is. He likes to talk a big game, but I can confirm, these days, he's not that wild and party guy that he may have been when he was younger. It seems somebody came to welcome us. If I know Mocha, she's probably going nuts right about now, thinking I'm being disloyal. <laughs> Anyways, getting back to old Shawneetown, over here we can see a historical marker for the spirit of Shawneetown. One thing I hadn't mentioned yet is that old Shawneetown is the oldest incorporated town in Illinois. Mm -hmm. 
Believed to be first settled by the Pecoe Shawnee in 1758 and visited by Lewis and Clark in 1803, Old Shawnee Town has been a place on the maps a long time. One of only two towns founded by the U.S. government, Old Shawnee Town was officially established by charter in 1810. Interestingly enough, they have this marker surrounded by an old wrought iron fence which is something I've only typically seen in cemeteries, particularly the ones out west. So I'm wondering if there's some sort of meaning behind that. If you happen to be from this area and you know why it's this way, let me know in the comments section below. A couple of old interesting relics over here. And no, I'm not talking about us. Well, look, another old air raid or Tornado sirens sitting there. Don't get any ideas. We're not buying one. I want to buy one and put it in the living room. And then over there you can see an old fire engine and a really old bus. Now something like that would be cool to own. I'm not sure, but I think there might be an old well in that thicket across the street. Anyways, I'm standing in front of what Google Maps calls the Catholic Church History Museum. And while from the looks of it, it doesn't look like it's an active museum, it is clear that it is an old church built in 1931. What do you make of this church, Marty? A couple more years, it will be history. Sadly. It's obviously abandoned and it's getting pretty bad. The brick, all the brick is cracking off and everything. I'm thinking at one time this was a pretty impressive church. You can see all the stained glass up there, the ornamental cross, small statues, the remains of what appear to be concrete benches. You can see the ornamental brickwork on the back of the church, which leads me to believe this church was at some point a significant part of Old Shawnee Town history. Looking at what's left in Old Shawnee Town, it's easy to dismiss the town's past as being anything but significant. However, as Johann Heisinger once said, history is the interpretation of the significance that the past has for us. And that's why, sightseers, some may never fully grasp the significance of this town's role in early American history when interpreting it from the present view of a town long forgotten.